Patch review! Alright everybody, it's time yet again for patch notes. We had in the past, of course, the complete list of patch notes 2.2.4. If you want to see the video on that, you can uh, click on the little um, button uh, that should pop up right around now. Uh, these are now loaded into the uh, main release of the game and they include such things as improvements to performance uh, and a whole slew of other things such as uh, when the galactic market can be founded, etc. As well as a nice little alloy. Uh, production boost to the uh, corporate empires. But we're not going to be talking about 2.2.4 today. 2.2.5 has many, many fixes and balance changes. Uh, most most notably, a stab at the desuckifying strike craft. Now, strike craft have been, um, well, there have been attempts to tweak them in the past. Uh, they've been made a little bit more powerful for this particular build, and we will illustrate as such later, and uh, we will talk about uh, what how that is going to impact the game. On top of that, some tweaks to pop growth that are rather important, as well as a whole bunch of tweaks to machine and synth ascension empires. Guess what? They no longer suck. Ain't that something? It's, it's, it's quite enjoyable seeing that. And of course, there's the Legion Empire Emblem set that is now available as well. Well, it was already available 2.2.3, but you get the general idea. So, 2.2.5, Le Guin free features, which is a Legion flag, uh, flag set. It's nice, we already talked about that. Let's talk about balance changes. There's quite a lot of them, and we want to go through all of them in order to make sure that uh, you are happy and understand what the hell is going on. First of all, Pop Gorov. Reduced random factors in pop growth. Habitability has more of a penalty on growth selection. Less, uh, lessened bias towards new species and traits have a larger effect on robot selection. So what does this actually mean? What, is, what, what does this actually do? So in the past, what would happen there uh, is that pops, if you had a planet with multiple types of pops, with multiple species, then due to certain weights, as they are called, certain numbers that are being weighed versus other numbers, uh, you would have a new pop being selected to grow on said planet. In the past, however, it had a tendency to grow every single pop in your empire, which is obviously not what you want to have, especially, for instance, if you're on arid world and it starts to grow pops that are only available on continental worlds, thus getting happiness decreases, thus having population uh, happiness decreases, and of course stability, yada yada, it's a domino effect, and that's something that they have, uh, the developers have strived to change with uh, changing the way pop growth happens by changing some of the values and some of the uh, weights around to make sure that certain uh, pops that need to be grown or can be grown on certain planets are preferred to grow on said planets. I know it, it, it sounds a little bit convoluted, but, but trust me, it does make a lot of sense. Uh, you don't want to have a planet with a species on it that you can't really use, and um, at least on that planet. And uh, yeah, those pops will no longer grow there. In addition, certain traits will have a larger effect on robot selection as well. So jobs that are available based on robots, say for instance you need miners, robots with minor attachments will be built instead of, say, farming ones. And that one right there is something you want to keep in mind. So this is something that has been a big bugbear to many of us, at least that are playing the game. And uh, this has now been changed, which is nice. So here is the... Oh boy, okay, so Strikecraft now do more damage, have longer range, are faster, and turn and accelerate quicker. Alright. Let's have a let's have a chat about Strikecraft, shall we? The red-headed stepchild of the weapon systems in the game. They've had a lot of negativity thrown around at them in the past, people saying they are not viable, carriers are not viable, going to the point to say, hey, the uh, Amoeba Strikecraft, they're, they're also cool, right? We can use those, maybe. Uh, there's a video about that as well. I'm not sure if that's still relevant, though. But uh, yeah, the Strikecraft have been boosted. And I actually did a little bit of research beforehand to uh, make sure that uh, everything is, in fact, correct. And I'm quickly going to go and navigate to that page. There we go. So, Strikecraft. In 2.2.4... And uh, 2.2.5, we're going to be looking at the differences here. Overall, we're seeing a rather large boost in firepower on pretty much every single model available. For instance, the Scout Craft, which is the only craft in the game that uh, does damage 
uh, or at least prefers to do damage to other Strikecraft. Keep that in mind if you're going up against anybody that uses Strikecraft. Scouts are by far the best one versus those because they have the Interceptor AI or behavior. Uh, Scoutcrafts did 2 to 4 damage. Now they do 3 to 6. Similar for T1, they do 2 to 8. Instead, uh, instead of 2 to 8, they do 4 to 12. T2, they do uh, 6 to 13 instead of... 4 to 9, and finally tier 3 to 9 to 18 instead of 6 to 12. Now, that by itself may not seem like a lot, but do remember that all of these strike crafts launch in multiple numbers and will be reinforced every uh, X amount of days. Now, that right there is important. In addition, it does appear that uh, strike craft tracking has been improved in a lot of situations, especially for the base ones. Uh, the for instance, the uh, tier 1 has been improved, etc. So that's something you also want to keep your eye on. Uh, they're doing a little bit better now versus smaller targets such as Corvettes. And most importantly, other missiles, especially if you have um, the Interceptor Strike Craft, the Scouts. Uh, they'll tend to... In they you can basically use them as anti-missile platforms as well, which is kind of useful. Overall, in terms of HP, nothing has changed. Armor penetration, shield penetration is still the same, so you don't need to worry about that. Also, these uh, armor, armor damage and shield penetration damage uh, numbers are in fact correct. They should be 0 0.1 for armor, I believe, because uh, they do 50% extra damage to armor and 100% damage additional to shields. So keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, so yeah, strike craft have been uh, changed, and this is a ongoing situation. Uh, they're going to tweak things in the future as well. 2.2.5 will not be the last patch bearing the 2.2. name, and I do expect to see more changes to Strikecraft as time progresses. Okay, okay, cool. Also, Strikecraft don't just yon wander off into the wild yonder and then swoop around to come to a battlefield that they're no longer useful at. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they fixed that before, or at least I tried to fix that before, but it's even more fixed now, so that's nice. So, Machine Empires. Machine Empires in the past, well, at least as soon as 2.2 launched with the new economy system, everybody was saying, you know what, Machine Empires are cool, they are horribly nerfed in 2.2. And to a certain degree, that is correct. Machine Empires have thus been boosted, and they get 50% more resources from mining bases. That right there is a pretty big deal, 50% is a huge number. Especially if you have a lot of space. For instance, if you're a determined exterminator or a, uh, a, uh, a assimilator, the 50% bonus to resources, especially from mining bases, can be huge. And they do compound with the technologies that you can get from mining bases as well. Therefore, um, yeah, Machine Empire should have significantly more resources available to them, which is nice. Uh, machine, uh, machine Empire Tech Drones now produce 6 energy, up from 4. Same thing for Agri Drones, they've gone down from five, uh, from 6 to 5. And uh, these also apply to Synth Empires, it makes perfect sense. Um, tech Drones, obviously they make energy. Empire Machine Empires run on energy, they don't necessarily need food. Unless I believe they are uh, assimilators. But yeah, and of course they can use the bioreactor as well to turn food into energy. But yeah, agri-drones agri uh, producing less food than they did makes perfect sense, and it does offset the tech drone uh, set thing here. Machine Empire colony ships now add two pops to a new colony, but they do cost 400 alloys instead of 300. Uh, that's actually a pretty big deal. Being able to start off with more pops on a colony is so important, and that's also why a lot of people like to rush the um, expansion tree because of the additional pop that you can get on a new colony. Uh, but of course, the additional cost for alloys does go up, which will potentially slow you down a little bit in the early game, but once you go with the meta of building nothing but alloy plants at the start of the game, then you're not going to run into any problems anytime soon, so yeah. Machine Empire Outposts now cost 150 alloys. To be quite honest, Outposts cost 150 alloys. Damn. That is pretty pricey, 150 alloys for an outpost. Okay. Hmm. We'll see how that's going to pan out. I have really no idea how this is going to affect gameplay right now. I'm sure that some people in the comments are going to like, 150 alloys, that's amazing, but... Uh, Personally, I, I don't really play Machine Empires all that much, especially considering uh, the nerving of the economy in 2.2.2, and I've been waiting to play a decent driven assimilator game. 
or uh, something along those lines. But yeah, uh, having their outposts uh, now cost 150 alloys does seem like a bit of an increase, but we'll see. Machine Empire Fabricators produce four alloys, up from three, at the cost of eight minerals, up from six. Makes sense. Uh, it is a two for one uh, transition here. Uh, four alloys for eight or three alloys for six. That makes perfect sense. So, yeah, again, machine empire fabricators uh, generating more alloys is definitely something that's good, especially with this alloy cost over here. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. So, good to see. And uh, it, to be fair, it does mean that machine empires will most likely have no problem churning out very large fleets early on, and again, the Driven Assimilator or Determined Exterminator strategy is going to be quite useful here. So, uh, being able to crank up that fleet and just build uh, four uh, alloy foundries right off the bat is pretty powerful, to say the least. New Machine Empire Colonies will start with two replicator jobs, giving a bit of an early boost. Up from one. Upgraded Capitals reduce to give the same number overall. The extra replicator job beyond two granted by upgrading capital buildings now depend on the planet still having 10 or 40 pops. To remove the tedious exploit with reselling pops to unlock the upgrade and then removing them again. Yeah, so what you could do in the past was uh, you could... Because the way the capital building in an empire works, it's based around the amount of pops there are. And considering it's from the very first slot in the... Uh, on the on the building queue you could hypothetically move pops back and forth to that planet fill them up until you got to the the, the minimum amount required i think it's like a hundred and then you could upgrade your capital building to get that initial bonus uh, on that planet and then move the pops away to get yet again another bonus so that is kind of cool that they have actually nerfed this a little bit yeah 10 to 40 okay that makes perfect sense but yeah it, it was an expensive exploit to say the least uh the amount of energy required for it considering you need to move pops and it does cost energy uh it's rather it was rather brutal i think it's like 100 energy per pop or something along those lines so you could easily spend up to a thousand if not more uh four thousand even to uh, upgrade your capital building relatively quickly, which was by itself rather powerful. Machine Capital Planets grant plus 5% drone output. This combined with, I would say, Machine Worlds should be pretty powerful. Because Machine Worlds do have a additional bonus for um, drone output, as far as I know. But still, that by itself is rather nice. Uh, plus 5% on your capital world is great. Especially if you are heavily industrialized, etc. So, a good, good little little addition there. Unemployed pops now use 0 0.25 energy for upkeep down from 1. So, if you have po machine pops not doing anything, they're not going to be a giant drain on the economy. Which means that you can have significantly more pops. Uh, four times as much, actually. Well, three times as much. Uh, for the upkeep, which is uh, 1 before. Ah, uh, it's 4. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, 4. Replicators now also produce one engineering research. That's nice, I guess. I wouldn't know. It's one research, engineering research. It's not going to really give that much an impact. But then again, engineering research is engineering research. I'm not going to uh, look a gift mouse, uh, mouse horse in the mouth. Slightly different animal. Slightly different size. Coordinators now produce one of each research for street society. That's fair. Uh, robots and uh, society research is not really all that necessary. Each coordinator on the planet now boosts simple bro drone resource output by 1%. And there is no stack limit there. Unlike with some, this feels like something that could be horribly exploitable if you manage to crank up the amount of coordinators. It also means that the amount of coordinators on a planet is actually rather important. I wonder... I wonder if you could combine this with the resettlement exploit and move all your coordinators to a singular planet and boost their resource output for a very short time right before they uh, they, they switch down a, uh, a strata. That's an interesting, interesting one. But yeah, uh, there is no hard cap on this. So this in large empires, this could potentially be exploitable. Could be cool, though. Uh, energy grid and nexuses are more expensive, but give an additional 5% and an additional 2 to 4 uh, max generator districts on their planet. 
This also applies to synth empires. Perfect sense. Uh, again, uh, machine empires need a lot of energy to keep their pops up and running, especially due to their upkeep. They don't really require food. They require energy instead. Machine empires are all about energy generation. Makes sense. Same thing for mineral purification hubs and plants. Interesting. It doesn't specify if this is just for synthetic empires. I will need to take a look at whether or not this also applies to normal empires. Because giving an additional 5% bonus and to the four max mining districts could be huge for um, planets using mining. That is that is a great little addition. That is good. I, I really like that. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'll need to take a look whether or not the mineral, mineral purification plants, if it applies to... Uh, normal empires as well. There's no definition that is the case, but still, uh, the fact that it says applies to synth empires as well um, gives me the idea that it's only to robot empires, but you get the general idea here. Robots with emotion emulators are no, now more likely to become maintenance drones. So, robots that generate unity are more likely to generate uh, to become maintenance drones which generate unity and i believe amenities although i'm pretty sure that certain ro most robots don't actually use amenities so citizen service civic effect on soldier unity generation increased from one to two and that right there could be incredibly powerful if played in the right way i've been dabbling with the idea of um, redoing the Fortress World strat, which obviously is not viable whatsoever, where you basically just have a gigantic army on a planet. For every single soldier job having plus two, not only would then the uh, would cause citizen service to have a gigantic amount of unity output on a potential Fortress World, you would also obviously have a large amount of troops on that world in combination with an FTL inhibitor would actually be kind of nice. I'll have to need to take a look at that as well. But yeah, I've, been, I've definitely been looking at trying to redo the Fortress World uh, strat video. Obviously not particularly viable in the game right now, but still, you know, it's something that we could look for. Especially for Unity Generation. Eco Simulation Dream Crops and Nano Vitality Crops technology effect on farmer output increased from 10% to 20%. It just means that some of the later uh, food technologies have more food output. That's fine, Nan especially nanovitality crops and gene crops, eco-simulation. I think these are actually rare technologies, I'll need to look that up. Geothermal fracking, deep core mining, mineral I I isolation technologies on miner- Wow, okay, so they've boosted both farmers and miners. Because uh, these are tech boosts from minor output 10 to 20 percent that's pretty huge now it's not i'm not sure if it's additive or cumulative but still i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look at uh, an increase of 10 percent and be like hey that's that's nothing no that's a huge huge economy boost especially when you're I, what i think what this is this one in particular is a way to improve alloy production because alloy production is something that has been changed quite significantly in the past patches and this could be something to compensate interesting field modulation quantum energy states quantum field manipulation uh, on technician output increased by 10 to 20 percent that's again it's an energy it's basically all base materials food and minerals and energy have been boosted from 10 to 20 percent over these over these techs so over nine techs, we've got a full boost on all these uh, outputs. These are all base materials. Again, it's a good illustration that you don't want to over-specialize your planets on specialists and build them completely full. You'll uh, you'll need these boys and girls in order to make things uh, work a little bit better. But it also means that you're going to have a huge amount of resources available earlier on, which is pretty amazing. The repugnant uncanny trait now has less of an effect uh, on pops avoiding amenity production job, pr production job, producing jobs. Okay. So in the past, repugnant uncanny would not be doing amenity produ production jobs. All right. Maintenance drone jobs considered amenity level of the planets. Job priority on the planet. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. 
Simple drones now ponder the empire's level of uh, level food, mineral, energy income when choosing a job. Okay, so simple drones are the robot drones that are, they're not really they're they're linked to the hive mind, but they will look at what the income is of the empire and then jump into the job necessary. And this is of course for uh, for robots. So if the empire is low on food, to jump into a food job, mineral, energy, vice versa. It's not clear if they'll switch jobs depending on various levels or whether or not it will be done based on uh, when the job, uh, when the pop grows. Made the bad app outcome for the abandoned terraforming project to produce two worlds rather than a totally unusable toxic world. Yeah, the abandoned terraforming project event, I think it costs you, it's the, gr is it abandoning or grimacing? I think it's the abandoning. It gives you a chance of getting like a continental world or a Gaia, but also a toxic world and obviously... Toxic worlds, molten worlds, etc. don't really have a purpose in the game, aside from giving esoteric minerals and tech and stuff like that. You don't really do anything with them, aside from build stuff around them when you first discover them and or claim them. And of course, having uh, losing a potential planet to a terraforming event, um, becoming a toxic world, obviously is... Very risky because you want to have as many habitable worlds as possible. So it's producing a tomb world uh, is pretty good instead. So at least you still have a planet of some value uh, that you can terraform later on. Uh, add a potential negative outcome to the atomic clock change since previously there was no real choice involved. That's because there was no real choice involved. Atomic clock, for those of you who don't know, you find a clock that has a countdown. I think it's 47 years. Or something along those lines, and after 47 years, a random uh, nano machine related event happens. Like it builds a ship, it builds a computer somewhere that you can get tech out of, it can terraform a planet, but apparently there's now a negative one involved as well. Made fanatic purifiers always able to choose no retreat war doctrine. That means they will always stay on the field and try to kill as many Xenos as they can possibly gather before they die. Because that's all that they live for and that's the way it should be. Scaled back bonus resources from planet modifiers just to, uh, to for the Suetonian planets and carbon worlds. Really? So these are relatively rare planetary modifiers. The carbon worlds and Teutonian. I don't even know how to pronounce that one. I'm, I'm probably butchering this. To just be for bonus resources from planet modifiers. Okay. So these have been nerfed, I guess? It doesn't really matter. They are super rare to begin with, so it doesn't really impact things. When freed from the time loop, the... Pretty pretty lizards will start with the same level of tech as their closest neighbor. Also, their economy and fleet power has been improved. That's good because initially it would start out as a one uh, planet OPM with I think like a 50k station in it or something along those lines. Uh, and of course, their fanatic purifiers have been stuck behind a, uh, a time bubble for quite some time, which. It's fun. Uh, you can ask um, the boys and girls over at the Templin Institute about the uh, uh, the Preaky Pre Tea. They love those guys. Telepaths, head researchers, high priests, administrators, executives, researchers, and forces and entertainments now have weights for ascension events, uplift, and related traits. That's good. So they actually uh, get to the to the right jobs. So that's nice. Returned or remove orbital deposits to uninhabitable. Returned to remove orbital deposits to uninhabitable precursor worlds. Okay, so some of the precursor systems were probably broken, and a bunch of resources have been returned. So that's nice. Species with very low habitability will generally not be selected to grow new pops, unless of yeah. Okay, so if, if you don't have habitability for a species, you cannot have that pop grow there. That makes that's that's perfectly fine. No issue there. Uh, Ministry of Culture for Hive Minds now adds Synapse job, jobs rather than coordinators. Yeah, you would hope so. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that did seem a little bit broken. Okay, UI. Added missing modifiers on army strength. Text overlapping. Obsolete modifiers from Shipyard UI. Uh, okay, that's interesting. Update machine intelligence tooltips. Exp uh, fix the expansion tradition finisher effect not being displayed in tooltip about max district numbers 
making the map math look really broken. Interesting. On the Hallowed Ground traditional pop, it's in a clarified it's a terraforming. Oh, okay. So factions that don't like um, terraforming of tomb worlds. For some reason, I, I never really understood this. Why traditional pops or at least um, spiritualist pops really like tomb worlds? Not entirely sure what's up with that, but yeah, they don't like you when you terraform them. Updated machine intelligence fuel to tip to mention that cyborgs need food too. Don't let your cyborgs starve. Yeah, this is uh, driven assimilator related stuff. Uh, cyborgs, of course, are uh, driven assimilators. They need food or at least a nutritional paste. So yeah. Uh, plasma accelerator is no display. <laughs> okay, no longer display caravan here. Cannon tooltips. Interesting. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Fix it to the bit wrongly stated that full citizen only can take ruler jobs. Okay, let's fix. Okay, AI. Machine and mechanical AI emperors favor generators districts a bit more. One would hope so. AI will not build housing buildings when it doesn't need them. <laughs> it's for those foreign investors that uh, cannot spend their money locally. So they're going to go in and take their money out of the local economy and buy the houses somewhere else. Thus inflating the housing market in those places and... Uh, pressing the current locals out of their houses. Jesus Christ, this uh, little tangent is hitting way too close to home. But yeah, the AI won't build housing buildings when they don't need them. Fine. Fine. <laughs> AI will no longer start scrapping buildings immediately once it decides it doesn't need any more of them. It will just stop building new ones for a while. Okay. Uh, improved AI budgeting for megastructures. Okay, they will probably now actually start building them properly. AI empires generally, uh, will generally build not more than two buildings of the same type per planet. Uh, okay. Okay, so they won't have super specialized buildings then. Okay, or planets even. All ship, uh, AI should be keen on building organic sanctuaries if the bio trophies are unemployed. Yes, that's obviously for the uh, rogue uh, servit servitors. Uh, yeah, I'm only interested in building commercial zones if it needs energy and amenities. It was previously overbuilding these. Okay. Oh yeah, it was. I was this. I did see this that the AI does tend to build gigantic amounts of commercial zones <laughs> for some reason. AI will check surplus of generation before making buildings. Okay, so it no longer decides to spam buildings on mass. So you. Oh, now I understand. So, okay, to put this line into perspective, there's a lot more depth going on here than at first glance. So, what happens? You get to a certain amount of pops. You have a certain amount of jobs available. And the certain amount of pops unlocks a building slot. Let's say you have 40. All of a sudden, the AI is like, wait a minute. There's a building slot here. We need to use it. Not taking into account the fact that there is high employment on the planet and a lot of the pops are already working in uh, specialist buildings rather than in districts therefore not cranking in out enough minerals energy and food thus their entire economy collapses that makes sense <laughs> and i'll budget the full total available the resources in the categories okay okay reduce performance cost for the outliner nice Threaded calculations for rendering planet icons on galaxy map. So a little bit more offloading on different threads. Cached habitability calculations for planet icons on the galaxy map. Okay, some more performance there. Change the scope of faction approval trigger from pop score to pop faction scope. Making it not broken anymore. It's modding. It doesn't really improve and involve me whatsoever. It's also a faction approval trigger. So yeah. And now we get to the bug fixes. Oh boy, the bug fixes. Are you ready for this? Alright, let's dive right in, shall we? Fix broken targeting for strike craft that caused them to meander out of the edges of the system, then rather to engage enemy fleets. Thank God. This has only been in the game since launch. And that's not a joke. That's been in there for a long, long ass time. And it made strike craft completely useless. So that's been fixed, and they've been boosted a little bit, like we talked about before. So maybe Strikecraft will actually be useful now. They've got high accuracy, they've got high evasion. Who knows? Maybe we can actually use them for once. That'd be nice. 
If only the AI would not just spam uh, point defense on everything, that'd be nice too. Fix some planetary features and thus districts not surviving the process from a terraforming Gaia pla to Gaia pla class. Because what's a paradise planet if you can't strip mine it and into a, turn into a honeycomb shell? So, planetary features, especially rare ones like moats and gases and stuff like that, would not survive Gaia world uh, terraforming. Uh, which is bad. So, that's been fixed. Yay. I'm sure Gully's planetary modifier is going to be really happy about that one. Foundry level 3 now is a, uh, now correctly gives Machine Empire's fabricator jobs instead of Foundry drones. Nice. Pirate, uh, private colony ships being generated without names. Okay. Galact fixed an issue where the Galactic Market Hub nomination decision would once again become available if a nominated planet's rating was boosted past a certain point. Okay. Orc and Cypla Clops portraits from humanoid portraits no longer have shoulder clipping through their clothing. I didn't even notice, and I use those two all the time. Fixing out of sync, out of sync, out of sync. These are all multiplayer ones. Fix clicking colonize on a planet not working for machine empires. Planet naming didn't work. Colony ship insta building, but did nothing. This bug was a real champion. <laughs> oh, that seems broken as hell. No, no wonder machine empires couldn't compete. Free movement faction demands no longer uh, no longer cares about robots or their rights. Ah yes, spiritualists. Joy. What if they're sins though? Hmm. Pops without military service rights will no longer take soldier or enforcer jobs. One would one would like to think so. It's almost like it's World War II all over again and the uh, kids lying about their age so that they can join the join the armed arm force forces. Wow, that did not come out of my mouth the right way. Fix not being able to assign unassigned leaders by clicking portraits from the... Oh yeah, I was wondering about that. Interesting. Fix literally unplayable title typos in the Italian names on the human name list. <laughs> Keeping priorities there, Paradox. Uh, fix the case where build outpost command inside spaces you already own would wrong reclaim that you were trying to build in another... I've never seen it before. Finally got around to adding a proper confirmation click sound when adding claims on the galaxy map. Nice. That's only been there since 2.0. Uh, 2 it's fine. Fix cases where pop growth could not overflow properly after a new pop is spawned. Okay. 99 plus 3 used to be 100. Causing all sorts of weirdness with pop growth modifiers. Eh. Fix cases where sign ships on auto explore would just stop or randomly choose crazy indirect path to the next unexplored system. I have noticed that. So that's fine. Supply ship records event not fire if the other party is a genocidal empire, since it makes little sense to them. Yeah. Fix expansionist over uh, K overtures leader agenda appearing if you made contact with an other empire. Fish, uh, fix an issue where a fallen empire shielded world would not spawn. Yes. Okay. So fallen empire shielded worlds. Uh, have spawning problems. They don't spawn properly, and that should be fixed. So that's nice. I have actually not seen the Shield of the World in quite some time. Not since 2.0, at least. No, maybe Distant Stars 2.1, but still. Uh, it's good to see that it's actually fixed. Uh, you can now build multiple habitats at the same time in the same system. Hallelujah. Please fix habitats, dude. They're so terrible right now. Good lord, there's no reason to build habitats right now. But at least we can build more than one of them at the same time. I hope this does not also uh, mean that we, whilst in Habitat is building, we can also build mega structures rather than just more habitats. Fix the lost ship outcome on fleet maneuvers. Sometimes having not having any effect. Updating the text of some synth uprising to better convey the scale of the disaster, since while we'll never tell how many beings are composed of a pop, it is probably more than a dozen. Yeah. So this is a fun thing regarding uh, pops. So the, the devs will never tell us how, how much a pop actually is. For a good reason. Because a pop doesn't have a fixed number. Um, the One pop could be a billion. But then again, there's not going to be a billion ruler pops on the planet, is there? It, it changes per strata. But for standard pops, one could, could assume that a billion is, is about right. Remove non-functional, non-intended merge fleet button for things like lost amoebas that are not supposed to be merged with normal fleets. Oh, I've tried so many times. Poor bubbles. 
always trying to join the fleet. Fix the pathfinding issue. Okay, fix the ship loss not being correctly counted in battle. Fix the bug from 2016, where if you split a fleet and then try to drag box select both of them, only one of them would be picked. Huh. I have probably noticed that one at some point. But I never realized it was a bug. Okay. Atomic clock follow-up anomaly rewards a grant that grant engineering deposits are now correctly converted by any existing mining stations into research stations. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the that's the computer, the computer one that comes out of the atomic clock. Okay, yeah, fair. Fix duplicate automated dreadnought for duplicate components. Bonus minerals from planets will no longer override the Dragon Horde. Yeah, that's bad. The Dragon Horde is like, what, 30 minerals output? Fix Bountiful Plains level 1 food deposit. Not showing up on Savannah Worlds. Fixed workers abandoning the mines to display specialists, leading to basic resource starvation. And a lot of unemployed high strata pops later in the game. No social mobility for you. Okay, that's cool. Oh, they were trying to displace pet specialists. They weren't just filling in the empty jobs. They were literally displacing them. Cool. No longer possible sometimes to rival countries that have pathetically relative power. Yeah, you should never be able to rival pathetic relative power nations. Uh, make sure to call the old lost amoeba event from the fleet manager. Yes, 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 yes. From the, yeah, because if, you're, if your amoeba would mature, it would still pop on the fleet manager, especially if it's a sanitarian. Ahab from Distant Stars can no longer change composition to prevent naval capacity Ex bypass exploit. Uh, I'm not going to go into that exploit right now. Regardless, it's been fixed anyway. Dead killed slave are now properly culled from slave market. So no more invalid entries, you heartless monsters. Effectively, you could put corpses on the market. Yeah. Uh, added... Well, actually, they would be alive when you put put them on the market, but obviously you would murder them afterwards. Uh, added checks to help ensure building specific ones. Empire are properly destroyed, converted when the world is taken over by a different empire type. So, for robot empires of certain buildings, machine minds have certain buildings, and if other ones take them over, then they will actually uh, occur. Fixed primitives on Fallen Awakened Empire pops not being purged by Prothorian and Contingency Vala Morgulis. So basically, primitives on Fallen slash Awakened Empire pops are actually going to get purged now. I do believe that there was a line in the uh, Primitive Worlds file, which was, I think, a to-do. I'm not entirely sure, but it was commented out that they could not be purged from orbit, which is a shame. But it's been fixed now, so commence purging, please. Horizon Signal, Waiting World can no longer happen on Yuka Monopole. That's not how you spell Yuka Monopole. Thank you. Colonizable plan. Oh man, this is going to trigger me so hard. That's not how you spell it. Colonizable planets will no longer be clear cut and paved over to hold single mineral or energy deposits by survey teams who become overexcited with the planet modifiers. Uh, Caravaneer sh weapons should no longer appear at the game start. Okay. Fixed plot growth bravely continuing when the planet was being birthed by the Perthorian. Quick, the Perthorian are coming! Breed! Yeah. Fix coming across uh, the Conservator before... Okay. So if you'd never met the Caravaneers, but you found their home base, you did not have communications with them. That makes sense. Add fixes to cases where the Scourge would sometimes expect. Uh, stop expanding. Thank God, finally. Fixed contingency and skirts not being able to purchase the final pop on this planet. We already talked about this in 2.2.4, I'm sure. Odd factory and the broken pirate ship turrets. But yeah, so there you have it. The patch notes for 2.2.5. You can access this by going onto your Steam. Right click, go to properties, go to betas, and then go to the, um, the current version, as in the test version in your... Outliner 2.2.4 should have been rolled out now as well. So you should have a little bit of a performance boost there, which is always a bonus. And of course, you get the Legion flag set as well 
with Le Guin. But yeah, 2.2.5. What do you think about 2.2.5? Are any of these changes, balances, UI, bugs, etc., that they've been changed? Do you feel these are good? Have you had a little bit of time playing around with it? Go and play Machine Empires and come back and let me know how you feel about it, and then we can take it from there. Uh, put those in the comments below. I'm really looking forward to reading those. But in the meantime, we're going to go log off here. Until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, meet each other. Thank you.